Aloha YouTube, what is up? Untitled Warrior here coming at you with the 50 best sneakers of 2021, guys. We are in December, final month of the year, and I always like to look back on like the sneaker releases of the year and kind of rank, you know, what was the best shoes that dropped and also what was the worst shoes that dropped. There's quite a few of them, and we'll be getting into that list very shortly. But before we do, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, Manscaped. Manscaped is a premier men's grooming brand that I have been using for a long time, guys, many years now. And some of you guys may or may not know that Christmas is actually right around the corner and there is nothing better to put under the tree as a gift or in your favorite stocking than Manscaped products. For instance, if you guys want to smell good, you need the refined Manscaped cologne, guys. It honestly smells really great. I actually have a bottle over there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what I've been using like on the daily basis. Very sleek bottle cologne. It smells awesome. And as I said, you can just kind of drop this in here. It fits in the stocking. No way. That's dope. Okay. So that's one thing. But, uh, you know, we still got space in here. So what else do we got? We can also fill up that stocking with some Manscaped body wash, guys. Also very, very good smelling. This is a new product they just released. The body wash is vegan, dye-free, and also cruelty-free. Very good product, not gonna lie. I use this every single day. Very good stuff. Also, as you guys can see, look at this. It just drops right in there. Oh my goodness. Perfect stocking stuff. Look at that. And of course, the holidays wouldn't be complete without the signature product of Manscaped, guys. Their Lawnmower 4.0. This thing is the best thing that you can use for below the belt shaving. It's nick free, cordless, waterproof, very, very good product. And again, it just fits perfectly in that stocking, man. It doesn't get better than that. Oh wait, it actually does because what Manscaped is doing is they're hooking up the Untitled Honda this Christmas season. When you guys use the link in the description or go to www.manscaped.com slash Hawaii, you will actually get 20% off your order plus free shipping. So make sure you guys do that today because again, Christmas is right around the corner. You guys wanna make sure your stuff comes in on time and you want to be able to fill those stockings, boys. Look at that. It's nice and full. Check it out. Manscaped. All right, guys. Now it is time to check out the 50 best and worst sneakers of 2021. Like I said, it was a year packed full of sneakers. And we're going to be doing this in tier list style. So I'll open up the tier list over here. All right. So we're on the tier maker website. And we have all of our 50 sneakers loaded up over here. Of course, there was more than 50 sneakers that dropped. But I tried to pick the ones that were like the most unique or the ones that meant the most to people of the year. If the sneaker you love the most is not on here, don't blame me, guys. <laughs> this is just the picks that I made for myself of things that I really liked this year or things that stood out. So starting off in January, the first shoe that I saw that was actually pretty dope was the Nike Dunk Low Street Hawker. And this one was a cool shoe because it was based off of like uh, Chinese like food markets over there, outdoor food markets where you can go and like get different foods and stuff. And it's like culturally relevant. And I thought it was a really unique concept. So the first one over here, I'm actually going to be putting this one into the B tier. I did like it a lot, but uh, it's just I didn't ever feel like I needed to cop it. So that's why I don't want to rate it higher. The second shoe is the Jordan 1 Low Chinese New Year's. And this one also dropped in January of 2021. I believe the retail price was $130. Surprisingly, the resale of this is very high too. For a Jordan 1 Low, these things are going for like 500 bucks on the aftermarket, which is very, very insane. So I'm going to put this one into C tier actually. The first hype Jordan 1 that dropped this year was the Jordan 1 1985 Neutral Grays. I have a pair of my own in here somewhere. And I like the design. Uh, it's a very cool shoe it's a play off of the original 1985 Jordan right so it looks a little bit like older has like a vintage kind of feel to it but in terms of like uniqueness or like things that stand out on it it is just a white Jordan one so I don't want to rate it too high uh, I do think it is okay though so I will put this into C tier <laughs> oh and the first controversial sneaker of the year let's look at the Jordan one trophy room this one also released in February of 2021 if you guys remember all those months back it was a big controversy when the Jordan one trophy room dropped obviously Marcus Jordan he owns a company trophy room uh, he is Michael Jordan's son apparently there was a lot of like backdoor allegations and stuff that he was like backdooring pairs and then he made up these like blue lace excuse for like friends and family versus non friends and family or something it was a big debate Anyway, the guy is not the greatest. Marcus Jordan, bleh. Michael Jordan, good. Not Marcus Jordan, not so good. For that reason alone, I didn't really like the controversy. The shoe itself is a cool concept, though. I wish it didn't have that controversy because I like the design behind it. It looks like a Jordan 1 Chicago and it has like that iced out feel. But because of that controversy, I have to put it into the A tier because I don't think it's up for sneaker of the year. I just can't agree with it. You guys might have a different opinion, but for me, A tier. The next shoe that we'll look at is a classic. It's a Jordan 6 Carmine. This one has been retroed many times and it is such a classic that it might be the best Jordan 6 ever. Uh, however, because it is a retro, you know, it's not something that we've seen that's new. So because of that, I want to put it into C tier. Very good shoe, just something that we've seen before. Number six, we have the Air Max 1 and Clot collab called the Kiss of Death. Like this Clot sneaker, it, it just looks terrible because on the toe box, there's like a see-through window so you can actually like like see inside the shoe it just doesn't work in my opinion it looks tacky this is just my personal opinion on it I just never liked it and uh the resale market looks like they don't really like it either because there's not that much value on it so this one 
It's gonna be the first D tier shoe, guys. D tier. Again, no hate if this is one of your favorite sneakers of the year. It's just my personal opinion on it. Next one that we got in February was a Jordan 4 Top Haze. Very cool sneaker when it was like in product images, official images. But then when you got them in hand, they looked a little bit different. I still think the colorway and stuff is nice. It's just the materials they use for the look that they were going for. It just looks like too cracked and like, I don't know, looks kind of cheap to me in my opinion. A lot of people really like this though. There's good resale value. For me, it's a brown Jordan 4, and as much as I love Jordan 4s, it's not something that I'm super excited about. I will put it into C tier though. And so now we'll be looking at a set of sneakers that were highly anticipated for the year. Uh, this was a collaboration with Supreme, and it was a Supreme Nike Dunk Low SB collaboration. Uh, there's four different colorways. One was green, one was blue, one was brown, and one was black. Uh, and it was a play off of the original drop that they had, like back in 2004, I believe, with the Nike Dunk Highs. Had those stars on the side, very iconic shoe, and very expensive. And these were no different, man. Resale popped off on this, sold out instantly on Supreme. But again, it's not something that we haven't seen before. So I don't want to put it too high up. I do want to say it's B tier, very cool. Uh, and resale, you know, was great, but nothing too crazy, right? Number nine is the Yeezy 450 Cloud White. And I think 2021 was the first year we've seen this Yeezy 450 model. I had a pair in hand, I won it on Confirmed app. And I just gotta say, like, the shoe doesn't seem very functional to me. Like, when I was holding it, the sole, like, seemed not functional at all. When you're walking, it just seems like it doesn't look comfortable. You're walking on like these weird, like spiny looking things. Um, the sock upper is just, you know what it is, it's a sock upper, so not much you can do there either. Overall, just not a big fan. However, I don't think it's the worst thing that Kanye has done this year. We'll be talking about those later on. Uh, this one, C tier, it's average. Number 10 dropping in March was another Jordan 1. This was a Jordan 1 University Blue. And as someone that loves Jordan 1s, and you guys know I love Jordan 1s, this one for me, I wasn't super excited about for some reason, you know? I saw it in hand, shoes are cool, it is a Jordan 1, quality is okay. It's not something that you scream like, I need to have this, or at least I didn't feel that way. So for me, I'm gonna put this one on the same level as the Jordan 1 Neutral Grays uh, seat here, and that might be a controversy there, but I uh, kind of just see it in that zone, average. Number 11 and also dropping in March was a Nike Dunk High collab with Carpet Company. This thing was <laughs> pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. It's a very unique looking shoe. Uh, I think they have like a logo on the back heel. You can like wear down the sides and it has a different color underneath. It's just a very interesting concept, one that we've seen before, but I kind of like the execution of it. So for me, I will put this in the B tier just because of the uniqueness. Like it was actually kind of slept on. If you think back on it, not too many people have these or you haven't seen them around. I still think they're a cool shoe though. And following that Jordan 1 University Blue, this might be the reason why I wasn't super excited for it. There was another Jordan 1 that dropped at late March, and this one was the Jordan 1 Hyper Royal. And I actually like this colorway a bit more. The color blocking and stuff made a little bit more sense to me, and I wanted this one more than the University Blue. So I'm actually gonna be putting this one into the B tier, because I do think it is slightly better than those other two Jordan ones that dropped so far in the year. But anyway, the next one is gonna be the Nike SB Dunk High in the Hawaii colorway. Um, I think they call these the Maui Wowies or something, and even though I'm from Hawaii, my name's Untied Hawaii, right? I never got behind it, dude. I don't understand it. I didn't like it. It does kind of actually give off a legit Hawaii vibe, like this is something you would see in like Hilo Hatties on a shirt or something, for the guys that know, they know. Um, but yeah, it just didn't really feel like Hawaii to me. So for this one, strangely, I'm putting it into the C tier. Okay, coming in at number 14, very, very dope shoe. This is the Jordan 3 Amamani year, and I have said it many times before, I believe this shoe has a chance to win sneaker of the year. Quality, incredible. Looks, incredible. Concept, incredible. Everything checked across the board, even like the resale, you know, the sizing, all of this stuff. It just feels great. And I really love what Amamani Air has been doing this year. Very vintage look, uh, but still like those premium qualities. And it just feels like luxurious. So I'm putting the Jordan 3 Amamani Air into S tier. And S tier, I'm reserving for my choices for sneaker of the year. Um, it's up there, guys. If you don't have a pair, buy one, please. They're so great. You won't regret it. Number 15 is the Jordan 4 University Blue. You know, I actually like this shoe. I'm gonna put it into B tier. It is a colorway that we haven't seen on the Jordan 4 before, that's why, and I just am a sucker for that University Blue. Number 16 is a Jordan 6 Travis Scott khaki. First Travis Scott drop that happened this year, uh, and dude, this one, it kind of flew under the radar in my opinion, you know? They had like a bunch of sizes, resale was not super crazy for a Travis Scott, and it makes sense because the shoe is just like a plain brown shoe with like a little like Travis Scott things. I think they have a stash pocket, the designs and stuff on the back heel, but overall not that unique. So this one for me is going into C, drop it there. Number 17, man, this one is a, is a weird one. I completely forgot about this when I was like making the list. Uh, it's the Nike SB Dunk Low Magic Mushroom and dude, 
This is might be one of the worst like SPs I've ever seen drop. I really did not pay attention to this at all just because the shoe itself was like bleh, you know? I don't even know what the concept was for. Magic mushrooms, you can make assumptions, right? But yeah, I, I wasn't feeling it. This is going in D. Number 18 and dropping in May was the Jordan 1 Shadow 2.0, 170 bucks. It is a play off of the original Jordan 1 Shadows. Uh, but unfortunately, like the reverse color blocking on this, I like the original Shadows better. It's 2.0. It didn't seem like there was a lot of hype behind it either. I think resale right now is like 220, 230, not very high. So if you guys want it, it's attainable. For me, very average. So that's going into C tier. Oof. And another one that dropped in May. This is a good one, guys. SB Dunk Low What the P Rod. This one was a take off of the original What the Dunk. Obviously, a very popular shoe and a mix of a lot of different dunks. This one, however, was focused on the P Rod versions of the sneakers, though. So, you know, same thing. A lot of different concepts on one single shoe. People were like hoping that the value of these ends up being like what the dunks and who knows down the line 20 years from now it might be but for now it, the resale is okay. Personally I like the what the dunks better. I wasn't really a big fan of the P-Rods so I don't know I just never felt like I wanted these. I think they're unique though so I will put them in B. Pretty solid shoe. Number 20 is the Fragment Dunk High Beijing. Uh, this one released in June and Originally, I really liked the sneakers because they were very limited and I think they originally dropped in like the early 2000s and it was a Beijing exclusive. Uh, now that they did a mass drop for it, I don't really have like the same opinion of it anymore to be honest. I will put it into C tier, but it's borderline D for me because it just feels so plain um, and they kind of like ruined it. If they kept it like exclusive, then I would have liked the original version. Now, because it's open to everybody, it just lost its appeal. 21, the Ambush Dunk High in the Royal Colorway. Uh, there was multiple colorways for this. Like this was a collaboration shoe. Uh, it has a swoosh that like comes out the back. Kind of reminds you of like a uh, Jeremy Scott shoes, not gonna lie, like with the wings flying out. Kind of the same concept, but on a Nike. I really like them, but I don't, uh, I didn't really feel like I needed them, you know? So the concept wise, I think it was unique. Uh, a lot of hype behind it. I will put it into B. Ooh. Uh, actually, we'll put it in the C tier. I, you really, the tier stuff is really tough, man, because you don't want to like make every shoe come off as better than it is. You really have to like look at the other shoes in that tier and say, is it better, less than, or equal to these other shoes? And so when I look at that, C tier is where it goes. And so finally, we can talk about some easy 350s over here. Uh, this was a triple drop that was region exclusive in different parts of the world. Uh, it was the mono ice, the mono clay, and some mono brown or something. I don't even know. Uh, the shoes, they had like a kind of translucent look so you could see inside the shoe a little bit. It was a very different looking 350 model, but at the end of the day, it's still a 350 and something we've seen many times before. I'm just gonna put these in the C. Uh, nothing new, but they're not that bad. Ooh, baby, okay, so 23. Jordan 4 Union collab. Uh, there's two different colors that dropped, right? The top haze and also the moss. and. That top haze, let me get this, let me get this for you guys. I mean, we recently just caught these ourselves and when I saw this in hand, dude, this thing was beautiful. Very, very nice sneaker. Collab is great, Union does a good job with like these nostalgic looks and stuff. But the shoe, quality, look, design, A1. I don't think it's sneaker of the year material, but it is up there. So this is definitely going in A tier. And trust, it was like borderline S tier for me, at least that one colorway. The moss would be somewhere in like the B or C though. Number 24 and dropping in June was the Dunk High Magnus Walker, which kind of flew under the radar, guys. Very cool shoe. Uh, it is unique where it has like two different looks on the left side and also the right side. You guys can see it here. It looks cool. But again, not one that people got really behind. I think just because Dunk Highs aren't as popular as Dunk Lows. So, flew under the radar. I like the concept. I'm actually putting this into B. Oof, oh, and this is a, uh, okay. And uh, it needs to be said, I made a video about it if you guys do wanna watch it. Uh, it was about uh, Virgil Abloh. But uh, number 25, we're gonna be talking about his July drop, Off-White Air Force One Lemonade. It's a yellow sneaker, guys. I really like it. This is one that was like, people were asking to be released for years, like after they had the first Air Force One drop and they kind of leaked the yellow ones at a certain point. I don't know if this is sneaker of the year material, but just with everything going on and stuff, I'm actually gonna put this into S tier. It was a unique drop. Uh, I think it was region exclusive to Chicago only. MCA, I, I believe. I think that's what it was. Yellow sneaker, you guys know I love yellow. And obviously with the passing of Virgil Abloh, it has a chance to win sneaker of the year in my opinion. And you know, I'm just gonna put it into the S tier because of that. So very cool shoe. Uh, shout out to Virgil changing the game. I talk about it in that video. Watch it if you guys want to. In July, number 26 was the Nike Dunk Low FTC collaboration. The materials on this was really great. The look is cool. It just doesn't, it's just not really functional in my opinion. So I will put this into uh, B 
because I think it does match with like the other shoes in B tier over here. But yeah, not one that I really, really needed. We'll see down the road. It, it's kind of borderline a must cop for me. Number 27 and also dropping in July was a long awaited retro, the LeBron 8 South Beach. And as you guys know, this one was a very coveted shoe. Uh, this is the first time I retroed actually too. Play off of South Beach, Miami, right? Where LeBron was playing with the Heat. They dropped this one at the time when he made the decision and it finally came back. It is what it is. I will put it into C tier um, along with the Carmine Sixes because again, it's a retro, nothing new. Woo, baby, number 28. Dropping at the end of July was a shoe that rocked the sneaker world. Jordan 1, Travis Scott, collaboration with Fragment Design. Fragment Jordan 1, all time. Jordan 1, Travis Scott, all time. They put those two together into a shoe and it actually came out looking pretty darn dope, guys. Uh, the high versions are selling for, I don't even know, like two grand, three grand. I don't have a pair. They're super expensive for me, but they are very cool. Um, I will put those highs in the S tier. I have to do it. It has a chance to win sneaker of the year just because of the fact that it was a big collaboration. Uh, we'll get into Travis Scott's drama later on in this video, but for now, at the time in July, like if you put yourself back in that spot, very hyped. It's probably still one of the most coveted shoes of the year and probably will be for the next five to 10 years, which is why it needs to be in consideration for best of the year. We'll also take a look at the Travis Scott Jordan 1 lows. I'm also gonna put these into the S as well. This is probably the first time ever people have ever wanted a Jordan 1 low this bad. I know the mochas were obviously really good, but this blue one, people were saying that the lows were actually better than the highs, which is a very crazy thing to say. Everybody makes jokes of Jordan 1 lows, but not when it came to this one. I think these things are blowing up in value too. It's up there, it has a shot. You know, I, I kind of put those hand in hand. Number 30 is the Para SB Dunk Low. <sighs> SB Mitch, if you're watching this, I know you'd think this is sneaker of the year, but I can't do it, man. <laughs> For whatever reason, I just don't like these that much. I'm gonna put this in the C tier. It, I don't know, I, I, I'm not gonna say much because I don't want Mitch to be mad at me. So SB Mitch, it's in C tier. We'll talk later, bro, we'll talk later. Number 31, a shoe that I really like, the Jordan 1 High Pollens. I've been looking for a yellow Jordan 1 for a long time. The closest one they had was a Jordan 1 Mid, not a High, Mid, New Loves. And I was waiting, you know, for a yellow Jordan 1 High. I love Jordan 1s, I love the color yellow. This was all of that. Quality, not the best, but you know what? I've been waiting long enough for this. This, guys. Even though you're gonna crank on me for this, personally, this is an A-list sneaker for me. I have two pairs because I wanna keep one to rock, another one to stock. The price right now is not insane, but I do think these will go up over time. Very cool shoe, one that I've wanted personally for a long time. Uh, number 32 was a shoe that, you know, I just really did not care about too much. It was that Nike Dunk Low in collaboration with Undefeated and they called it the five on it. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of hype on it. I thought it was just kind of bleh. I'm putting it into C. <laughs> And 33, uh, this was a big one for Hawaii. Uh, we got a kit store in Waikiki and they dropped that Air Force One kit Hawaii. It was a big deal. We tried to camp out for it. If you guys watched that vlog, didn't work out because that line was like a thousand deep. So we ended up leaving empty handed. The shoes themselves, guys, it just, it seems like a plain Air Force One with a little bit of blue. I don't know, it's a C for me. And again, I might look like I'm a Hawaii here because it's not higher up, but I just don't understand it. It was, They could have did so many different things with it, but it, it just seems kind of plain. All right, 34 is the Fragment Sakai LD Waffles uh, in collaboration with Fragment, right? They had that blue one and they also had the white one. White one, that one is fire, guys. The blue one is nice too, that blue obsidian, but that white one, for whatever reason, it just worked for me. It looked really clean. This one, I'm actually putting into the B tier. I did like these a lot. And originally I said that that white one had a chance for sneaker of the year, but Looking at the other shoes that are in S tier, I can't put it up there. It's just not at that level. Um, but personally, I do like these quite a bit. Number 35, man, the Jordan 4 Lightning. This one dropped in August and dude, this was one people have been screaming for a retro for many, many years. And there's always rumors every time before this year, oh, it's dropping, you know, again in 2018, never happened. Oh, it's dropping in 2019 for sure, never happened. Dropping in 2020, never happened. Finally, in 2021, we got the Jordan 4 Lightning back yellow jordan 4 it's going right next to those pollens put it there a tier classic i got it right back there got two pairs of these as well this one dropped in september it was a nike dunk low sb quarter snack collaboration uh they're like zebra looking shoes sbs are so polarizing i feel like either they're a hit or they're like a complete dud there's very few that go in the middle zebra shoes for me man i don't get it i don't get it it's going into the d tier that one is going to be very controversial a lot of people are not going to like me for that but they're zebra shoes. They're zebra shoes. I, 
what else is there you know what else uh next up number 37 is one that i am very very happy about this is the pata collaboration with nike on the air max one calling it the waves it was like a wavy look and i believe the colorways were like monarch there was like this blue one and they just have like this uh maroon looking one whatever but we'll look at just the monarch because that was the first one that released i like it i have a pair myself i'm putting this in the b tier it's not super crazy new but that wavy pattern for whatever reason i like it Ooh, number 38 a shoe that i just recently bought from goat dunk low sb mummies dude people don't understand how good this shoe is dude like it is halloween themed i guess because it is mummies you know it has like that bandage wrap over the shoe glow in the dark soul got like these little like spider details got these eyes on the back there's just so many things to love about this and it really makes me feel like this was like a lot of work was put into it you know so for this one i don't think it's sneaker of the year material but i'm putting it into a tier i like this one a lot i only think this is going to keep going up and it'll probably be a thousand dollar sneaker in the very near future oof and one that was a thousand dollar sneaker but not so much anymore this one dropped in october the dunk high strawberry cough <laughs> <laughs> I, there's not much to say here either guys this is one that people were looking for for a while i think it originally released or some pairs were back out in uh 2020 but the full-on release was delayed to this year a lot of speculation was made why like they delayed this release so long some people were thinking because of the coughing you know and you know with the pandemic and stuff going on they were like it's not a good time to release this for whatever reason it is at the end of the day it literally looks like a strawberry and because of that it looks like a strawberry you know it's hard to wear I'm putting it in the C tier. Oh man. And Yeezy trying to do too much. Uh, at number 40, dropping at the early start of November, so very recent, was the Yeezy NSTLD boot khaki. <laughs> I don't even know, man. Like, I look at this thing and I'm like, this is Yeezy trying very hard. You know, I think the retail was like, uh, it says over here. 340 bucks and that's the retail i think there is some resale on it but there's no way you're making me th pay 340 for this like it looks comfortable but functionally i don't get it i'm putting it to d tier sorry guys if you like it it is what it is but i no no that's d for me and we'll just get the other two out of the way right now as well they had this foam knit runner looks like a sponge on your foot d tier <laughs> then they combined it <laughs> that foam runner with the boot and then made a foam boot thing it, it, more is not better in this case it just looks horrible uh we're putting that in the d tier as well i think that one was 400 retail if, if that's high fashion it's not for me i just don't understand it and you know some people are gonna be like okay i'm turning off the video here be my guest man you can have all of those shoes that you want pay 400 pay 500 whatever the resale is it's for you i'm not touching that and so a sneaker that i was highly anticipating and this one is going into s tier just because it's something that i really like uh, the Nike Dunk High Gundam. There was two different colorways, the Unicorn and I think the RX-8 or Banshee, Norn Banshee is what they called it. They were released or announced in collaboration with like Olympics, right? Like they were trying to promote the Japan Olympics that happened in 2021. Originally supposed to be in 2020, but because of pandemic pushed back and it was to help promote this. Gundam, it's an anime. There's giant robots and stuff flying around in space. The shoe looks like a Gundam and the things that they released with it look so cool. They drop keychains, they drop like actual like action figures and stuff. It, I don't know. I really like this one a lot. I'm an anime nerd and you guys will not like this and not agree, but putting it in S tier. Controversial, whatever. I'm putting it in S tier. Another shoe that dropped in November uh, was another Off-White. This one was in collaboration with Jordan Brand. It was the Jordan 2 Off-Whites in that varsity colorway. Uh, no disrespect to Virgil, I'm just not a big fan of twos. Uh, see, I feel like I'm supposed to put it higher up than it is, but I just really could not care less about this shoe, unfortunately, just because I'm not a fan of twos. And I'm not gonna pretend to be a fan of twos just because it's a collaboration with Off-White, you know? If you hate it on twos and then all of a sudden you're a big fan, that's kind of weird, bro. You know, it's, it's okay to change your mind, but for me, this shoe was not enough for me to change my opinion of it. So I did put it into C tier, uh, but that's no disrespect to Virgil. It's just the shoe itself. I'm not a fan of the two series. All right, and we got a couple shoes left over here. Uh, one that I am a fan of because we're talking about off-whites was the 50 drop. And now there's obviously 50 sneakers here. Uh, you know, you can pick your favorite out of the bunch, but I wanted to like look at them as a whole. I have a lot of respect for Virgil for doing this. Originally, I was kind of hating on it because I was like, you know, you're just switching the colors up on a Nike Dunk Low. What are you doing? You know, like you can't do this. It's, it's weird, but he made this available to a lot of people exclusive access only so you know it drops to many many people myself included i hit on this and i never hit on exclusive on sneakers app he wanted to let everybody have a pair i thought that was pretty cool i love 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 the mystery box concept where they just shipped you whatever it was you know you don't get to pick what lot you get you just get what you get 
Love that. For those reasons alone, I'm putting it into A tier because it was unique. It's something we've never seen before. Some of the shoes don't look that great. Some of them look pretty darn cool, like the 01 lot and the 50 lot, unique, right? Respect to Virgil for that. Shout out to that. That was a very cool drop. Next up is the Jordan 11 Cool Gray. These did not drop yet as this video is being released, uh, but it's a retro that a lot of people wanted. For me, it's not something that we haven't seen before. It goes in the C tier. Also, I believe there's like a million pairs of these being dropped or something. So if you guys want it, it should be very obtainable. Go get it. Jordan won Ama many years. This is about to drop, I think, in like a couple days as I'm making this video. I like it. I really like it. I don't think it is S tier like the Jordan 3s. Those just are next level, but I really love the collaboration with Ama many years and what they do on the Jordan 1. It looks cool. A tier for me. Cause Sakai Blazers. This one, it, it's strange, man. Like. People normally would be super hyped over this. I think it's a pretty cool collab. Sakai, Cause, and also Nike. But for whatever reason, there is no resale on this, you know? Um, and because of that, I think it kind of kills the hype. Personally, I kind of dig it though, and I will put it into B tier. I like the look. I think it will end up being a lot more like coveted later on because it is a unique design and Cause Cause, you know? <laughs> cause Cause, so B tier. One of the last ones over here is the Jordan 1 Soulfly. And uh, this one, I'm not a big fan. Um, some people are really hyped over it. There is some kind of story behind it. I didn't even bother to look into it because the shoe itself looks plain to me. I think if it wasn't in collaboration with Soulfly, it kind of looks like a outlet sneaker. Hot take. If you guys want to get mad, get mad. Um, but that's how I feel, so I'm putting it there. Last shoe, the 50th shoe, Travis Scott Air Max. Now, this was a weird year for Travis Scott, right? We have a shoe, two shoes, the fragments, uh, Travis Scott's that dropped, and they're potentially sneaker of the year. But then we had that Astro World incident, right? Um, and these were supposed to drop shortly after that event happened, but Nike ends up pulling it. Um, and I don't think there has been like any like uh, news or announcements right now from either side about redropping them again. Especially because, uh, you know, he's in the heat of like legal battles and stuff because people are trying to sue. I don't know if these shoes will ever be dropped in terms of just as a sneaker, that like, you know, whole incident aside. They're all right. They're not the greatest though. I will put it into B tier for uniqueness, um, but I don't think they have a chance of sneaker of the year, um, especially with that drama and stuff. Some people will love them. It's not for me. Uh, anyway, this is the final 50 top sneakers and worst sneakers of the year, in my opinion. I don't know, kind of like compare the list, uh, you know, maybe put in the comments like what you guys think might have been different, where you guys think things should be higher up. Did I miss any sneakers that are like obvious on this list? Now that I'm thinking about it, the Tur Duncan should be on here. So 51, bonus one, Tur Duncan, <laughs> D tier. <laughs> People give me so much hate on that because I opened it up in a mystery box and they're like, nah, that thing is awesome. It's a D tier, D tier boy, there's that P. D, whatever. Anyway, D tier. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy it, don't forget to hit that like button down below. Annual thing we do every single year, breaking down the best sneakers. This is one of my favorite videos every single year to make. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, guys, until next time, stay humble, stay blessed, take care, and I will see you on the next episode. Aloha. Shoot.